Good afternoon, Year 8, and welcome to our second lesson on Dickensian characters. Uh, today we're going to be looking at um, one of uh, the most famous, if not the most famous, Dickensian character, Scrooge. You've probably all heard of him, even if you haven't read A Christmas Carol, the book that he's, uh, that he's in. Anyway, before we go on to that, you'll do now, in popular culture, which just means in everyday life, what does it mean if you call someone Scrooge? What do you think the phrase bar humbug means? Just scribble down a couple of answers to those to give you five minutes then on to the next slide. Our learning objective today is to explore how Scrooge is presented in the first part of A Christmas Carol, which is the book that he uh, is a character in. Uh, the title that goes into your books is The Presentation of Scrooge in the First Part of A Christmas Carol. Before we go any further, for this lesson, you're going to need a pen, a pencil and a highlighter, your exercise book, and a copy of the attached PDF Scrooge extract, which is will be attached or is attached to class charts. OK, just to go back over the do now now uh, in popular culture, what does it mean if you call someone Scrooge? Um, possible. And then what do you think the phrase bar humbug means? Possible responses may have included Scrooge in reference to someone who spoils the fun or doesn't join in with others in moments of celebration. Um, Scrooge used the phrase bar humbug throughout the first stave. That just means the first part of a Christmas carol. The phrase is often misunderstood. When Scrooge decries Christmas as a humbug, it is often taken as a general exclamation of displeasure and bitterness. But Scrooge didn't just hate Christmas at the start of the tale. He deemed it to be a complete fraud. So he didn't just dislike all the sentimentality. He thought it was a fraud. He thought it was, you know, kind of a lie. Now, as I've already said, during this lesson, we're going to focus on the character of Scrooge during the first part of A Christmas Carol. Some of you may have been reading the book over the half term, but don't worry. and may already be aware that the story follows Scrooge on the road to redemption as he is forced to reflect on his behaviour by three ghostly visitors. You don't have to have done that, though. Um, that's fine. It's good if you have, but you don't have to have done. Scrooge is a very different character by the end of the book, but we are going to investigate how he is presented at the very start. So at this point, I want you to read through the extract which is attached. That'll take you seven minutes. Now, now that you've read the PDF, um, stick it into your books, um, ready to annotate. Annotation is just like I've done here, a line coming from a certain part of it that you're analysing. Um, and then write down and explain what each one. So first of all, look at paragraph one, just paragraph one. Underline and highlight or underline or highlight all the words Dickens uses to describe Scrooge. Write them down and explain what each one means and the impression it creates of Scrooge. And for example, I've got tight fisted there. Scrooge isn't very generous or giving, suggesting that he's selfish and doesn't think of others. <laughs> right. Um, I'll read it out for you first, but here's one that I've, uh, you can add these notes to the notes that you've got. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. The cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his cheeks, stiffened his gait made his eyes red, his thin lips blue, and spoke out shrewdly in his grating voice. A frosty rime was on his head and on his eyebrows and his wiry chin. He carried his own low temperature always about with him. He iced his coffee in the dog days and didn't thaw it one degree at Christmas. So here we are at the top there. Tight-fisted. We already talked about that one. Squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. All words suggesting that Scrooge takes the things he wants even if it belongs to somebody else. The list emphasises just how ruthless and selfish Scrooge is. Hard and sharp as flint. This is a simile suggesting he has no feeling and doesn't show his emotions. Shriveled his cheek, stiffened his gait, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue. Scrooge's physical appearance reflects his cold, unfeeling personality. There is no warmth in his manner. Didn't thaw one degree at Christmas. Even during times of celebration, Scrooge is still unfeeling, selfish and isolated. The cold within him froze his old features, never smiles or expresses emotion. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. He does not have or want any friends or relationships with people. He prefers to be alone. So um, add those to the notes that you've got and then go on to the next slide. 
Now look at paragraph two. Explain how comparing screws to weather conditions is effective, which of course uh, is uh, comes under the under the umbrella of pathetic fallacy. Consider consider Dickens's use of pathetic fallacy to demonstrate Scrooge's character. You've got five minutes for this. Eternal heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No warmth could warm. No wintry weather chill him. No wind that blew was bitterer than he. No falling snow was more intent upon its purpose. No pelting rain less open to entreaty. Foul weather didn't know where to have him. The heaviest rain and snow and hail and sleet could boast of the advantage of him only in one respect. They often came down handsomely and Scrooge never did. So here's a little one that I've done at the bottom. Dickens uses the extremes of weather such as wind, falling snow, heaviest rain, hail and sleet to emphasise that Scrooge's cold countenance is unchanging regardless of what is going on around him. It is a way for Dickens to show that Scrooge has a lack of care for his surroundings because he is so self-absorbed that no wind that blew was bitterer than he. It further conveys his selfish and unfeeling nature. Now I want you to um, explain how comparing Scrooge to weather conditions is effective. Okay, now look at paragraph three and four. Why do you think no one speaks to Scrooge? Use quotes from the text to support your answer. I'll read it out. Nobody ever stopped him in the street to say with gladsome looks, my dear Scrooge, how are you? When will you come to see me? No beggars implored him to bestow a trifle. No children asked him what it was a clock. No man or woman ever once in all his life inquired the way to such and such a place of Scrooge. Even the blind men's dogs appeared to know him when they saw him coming on, would tug their owners into doorways and up courts, and then would wag their tails as though they said, no eye at all is better than an eye than an evil eye, dark master. But what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked, to edge his way along the crowded path of life, warning all human sympathy to keep its distance, was what the knowing ones call nuts to Scrooge. And here's a little one that I've done down here. Dickens shows that there is a mutual feeling of disdain between himself and other people. Beggars, children, man, woman, and even the blind men's dogs avoid him and view him as evil and dark. Scrooge encourages this and warns all human sympathy to keep its distance. He likes to be alone and does not care for others. So there's the question at the top. Why do you think no one speaks to Scrooge? Write a little paragraph like that using quotes in the way that I've done. That'll take you seven minutes to actually write the paragraph from now. Now your actual task, this is the uh, the one that I want uploaded onto class chart so that I can give you all achievement points. I must say I'm very impressed with the way that you, uh, or most of you so far, have picked up how it is that you, uh, how it is that you do that. I've got a, a rush of uh, information onto class charts there, but this is the task I want you to upstate, update. How does Dickens present Scrooge at the beginning of the story? We've collected lots of information about that, obviously. Shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. Using all the notes you've created today, write a response to this question. Remember to use quotations, zoom in on individual words and comment on our effects. You can use your notes from task one to help, obviously. Include your opinion of Scrooge as a reader. What is the, what is the impact of his description on you? I say 10 minutes for that. Load it up to class charts so I can give you loads of achievement points. Well done, Year 8, and I will um, speak to you tomorrow. Brilliant.